The Greg Show, starring Gregory Strokes. I'm Scotty Joe Vegas, inviting you to stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because you will meet and hang out with hypnotist Larry Garrett. Plus many other things on the agenda that has not been formed yet. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man who walks the park with his dog and me, Mr. Gregory Strokes. Thank go. you. Welcome, welcome, yeah. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome back to The Greg Show, uh, coming to you from the studios of NBC Comcast in beautiful Elmhurst, Illinois. Amen, sister. Yes. I'm sorry, I walked off set there. <laughs> Where they always ask me before I come in, have you paid your monthly bill? <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, I'm lucky. They have like that triple play thing. Yeah. I have the quad package. It's cable, phone, internet, and a community TV show. There you go. All we can't beat that. on this monster of a of a network we have out here. Four Ring Circus. Uh, Michael Jordan, Air Jordan, got married again. Air he Jordan. is now 50 years old. He's a legend. He's rich. He's famous. Treated his new wife to an expensive ring and a prenup. Hello. Great. Thank you. All right. Want prenup. <laughs> Want prenup. Boop, boop. You know, I've uh, there's been several times I've experienced a double dribble, and that's usually in the bathroom. So Hello again, everybody. We missed the drummer tonight. <laughs> Where's our drummer? <laughs> I don't know. I'm really kind of mellow tonight because uh, the drugs. The, no, it's no. it's not the drugs. It's like the last few shows that we did out here have been like monstrous undertakings. Yes. With, with, with the bands, we yes, had uh, the kickback, and then we had uh, the pulsing weave. Pulsing weave. And, of course, I still, after all these years, I don't get people's names right. So I, I, I wrote on the script and everything as the computer crashed last week. I yes. said, the, the pulsating weave. Yes. And then they're like, no, it's the pulsing weave. So I don't know. It's that Indiana, Indiana upbringing. Yeah, Indiana, I guess. Yes, sir. All right. Who's your? All right, Tom Cruise. How many of you have uh, seen the new movie Oblivion? Hey, all right. Exciting stuff. Sounds like um, the studio audience is crazy. It's a big hit, but not so great reviews. <laughs> In fact, um, an advanced copy was discovered in the late Roger Ebert's wall. Wow, it's better than his trach. Yeah, something like that. And uh, anything else is going on? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about yeah. some, some of the things we'll that gab. have been going on. We'll yes. gab and, yes. and bond, as we we'll say. Sniff, as we'll sniff, as they say in the business. Sniff. Um, I was a little upset because last week, well, you ended up spending the night over at the place. Yes. And um, the Waverton has been this hotel here in Elmer's, right down the studio. Yes. And, and I learned tonight that they had a water park. Yes. And, and you said last week that they closed. Yes, I was very disappointed. I miss it. Yeah. So anyway, we'll talk about that. Yes, Not much there. Great stuff. Anyway, uh, somebody was asking me, how, uh, how do you get a TV talk show host off your porch? How do you do that? How does one get a TV talk show host off their porch? You pay them for the pizza. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Hello again, everybody. We have a wonderful program. Uh, hypnotist. Larry Garrett. Larry Garrett is with us. Fantastic man. Um, he was wadaining us in the green room back back there. Absolutely. And he, yes. and he was talking before. I felt a very positive energy. Yes, and he, he was, was talking like, about how, man. he said, you created this? He says, that's good. When you create something from scratch. And what did you say? You said, when you create something from. Uh, Nothing. When you trust, you can have it all. That's when true. you trust, you can have it all. Okay. Tell my mother that. Except. <laughs> I don't trust nobody. We will talk about her tonight. We'll talk about her tonight, sure. Uh, anyway, Larry's with us tonight, and um, what else do we have? Uh, we're missing our. We're missing somebody on the. We're missing. You know, people Celine. have been asking like, where has Celine been? Celine's in New York. Yes. And um, God knows doing what with who. Uh, exactly. I'm yes. like, what are you doing out there? Yes. So she hasn't been to the last couple shows. You're so far away. Doesn't anybody I, stay together anymore? Everybody gets to go places, and I don't. See, this is my fun. Right down the street from the closed Waverton. All right. <laughs> anyway, I'm Greg. This is The Greg Show, and we are reinventing community media from the west side of Chicago and beyond, and we'll be back in just a moment. Thank All right. You. Yeah.
I was, I was laughing because as I found this thing today, uh, don't ask me why, it was like five bucks with like a couple, uh, my favorite store is, is Deals. Deals. And, and you can get like a whole bunch of stuff. Hmm. So, so when I was working in broadcasting in Grand Rapids, Michigan, one of my favorite people on TV was this guy named, this gentleman named Tom Van Howe. Fantastic He was, he was uh, on the number one newscast uh, in the market on NBC and for a number of years and just was a was a friend. I, I really liked him because when I moved there he befriended me and at the time in my 20s he said you know I always wanted everything when I was young and and I always wanted it now and and here he was he was like the big dude in town the highest paid guy in town and here he is talking to me the dude from Chicago so about four years later after I'd moved there we had started the show up and I called him up and I said Tom I said, Mr. Van Howe, he says, you can call me Tom, Greg. And he came on the show. Hmm. But a story about Tom, as I was interning at this other television station. Not Tom Schneider. No, not oh, Tom Schneider. I, I did meet Tom That's Schneider, another story for another story. That's another story for another week. <laughs> so Tom Van Howe, for some reason, had this uh, reputation as being um, uh, not prima donna-ish, but I don't know what it was. But a lot of times, uh, you know, television talent has uh, a self-importance, yes. which has now trickled into most of society. If you notice that, everybody kind of feels entitled. So there was, there was this one time that I was talking, we were talking shop over at the Fox station one time, and somebody was saying, yeah, Tom said something, allegedly said something to one of the directors or something of a parade, and while, while they were doing, um, while they were shooting, he was touching up his makeup and, and, and like doing his hair like yes, this, sir. and they took a shot of him. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the rule of thumb is you always want to treat your crew with dignity and respect. Yes, at all times. Because when you have to touch up your makeup and, and take a look at your hair. Even if you say, say the shot. wrong thing at the wrong time. Yeah, I don't really know if there was any payoff to that story, but Tom retired and, um, and, and just, was a, just was a really good guy. I liked him. It's four minutes of my life I'll never get back, but <laughs> I, I enjoyed listening. <laughs> uh, we are on <laughs> YouTube. Yeah! Do a key Care search. Uh, a key search. Uh, a search of keywords, Greg Struess, because I have no idea, unless this show is now on a Greg Struess channel, uh, or someone's going to channel Greg Struess, I have no idea. You'll have to ask an eight year old how to do that. You'll have that. to ask an eight year old, yes. but you know, people are asking me, well, when are you going to put that show on? Look, I'm doing it little by little. I'm doing the best I can, and are you, send those cards and letters. Are right. you Dan Schmidt there? You got the little pinky thing going? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so before the show, we're out here and and changing in our deluxe accommodations, and and here he is changing, and I, I keep hearing the dry cleaner going on, the, the yes. hand cleaner going yes. on, and I'm like, what is this? So you're putting your shirt on, all of a sudden, shh. yes, because that's how I iron my shirt, through the through the hand dryer, there in the old bathroom. It's the Polish way of doing it, but that's what I'm in. Okay, I'm Polish. Now we were talking uh, with the guest beforehand, and it was funny that you were saying because um, I because I asked him this afternoon if he could do some hypnosis work. Yes, and he says I can do it all, and um, and I said, well, do you think that you could take Scott, our announcer, because he does like to talk a lot before the show. Yes, and, and maybe work on him, and, and then and then you were saying, well, do you think it's it's because of the you know the cards and the yes stuff and you yes said, the nightlife the boogie. I understand. And, and you said you don't have a gambling problem, you have a winning problem right now. Well, I believe that was Bob Jr. that said that. I was that said right, that, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. So the Kentucky Derby was recently, recent? 139. And I was thinking of you that day because people were, were playing it. And do you play, is it considered playing horses or betting horses? How do you do that? I would consider playing the horses. I usually shut my phone off at about 12 on Derby Day because all the, the novice people call me and says, what's your pick? What's your pick? And it's like, yeah, hey, I shut it off. It's my personal hell, and I'm dealing with it. 
And I understand that, that Jenny, beforehand, Jenny's working camera tonight, was meeting the guests and camera she's one. doing great stuff. Yeah. And she said, Scott, rivers, rivers, rivers. And I, I'm thinking of the Splain Rivers or the Calumet Joan River? Rivers. Joan Rivers. And uh, Down by the, riverside. The, the casino. Down by so, the riverside. And you're not going to entice me this time because the last time I went out to the, the casino, as far as I'm concerned, is the last time I go out to the casino. That's the first step. He yeah. To, yeah. Way to go to, to recovery, me, ladies and gentlemen. He wants to give me, he's, he wants five, to. Five, five, five. wants to buy me steaks and a nice baked potato, and then we end up, it ends up I end up losing $35 plus having roast beef. Plus, we wound up in a clown car, and we had to get out of that situation. But yeah. that's another whole story for another day. Okay. So did we get this all straightened out or no? I, I don't know. I'm not going to the casino okay. tonight. That's fine. Jenny, are you and Je Scott going to the casino tonight? I didn't know if I was included on that. Was I included on She said, Scott, let's go I, to the casino. I thought I was going to El Struso Inno, but oh, uh, whoa, kidding. with El Giorgiano. Well, Giorgiano, something and like that. And your doggies. All right. We have, uh, we've been doing like a lot of music on the show. Yes. And um, how do you explain, uh, like, the last couple shows? It has been exhausting work. They I are think. wonderful people to work with. It is a lot of work to do a band. Our sound guy did a great job on that. And So why isn't he here this week? Maybe he got <laughs> sick. <laughs> so we're having this conversation maybe. before. This, this is like the behind-the-scenes type stuff. And I said before the show, I, I, we're, we're, you know, as we're, we're talking beforehand, you know, I said, well, where do you think he is this week? And, and, I said, and he's like, well, Bob, our director, knows. And, and I said, I'm, gonna, I'm making a book that Bob doesn't know. And you said, oh, you know, Bob knows. So I went and asked Bob. Yep. I said, Bob, you know, don't you? And he said, no, I don't know. <laughs> That's what they all say. So it's okay. I don't know. If Loose lips, shink, ships. Ships you want to. Um, so we're going to talk about the past, weren't we? Somebody for just a moment, just because uh, I, I, was thinking, I was thinking how life kind of works, because we were talking beforehand. Um, that when we did the original show, it was out of uh, a small studio in Dalton, Illinois. And that's where I grew up, in Dalton and Riverdale. You were in Posen and Dixmore. Oh, Dixmore, man. I'm from the Mo. And, I'm from the and Mo. And it's, it's now considered the South. Well, it always was the South Side, but it's the South Side because it's the Irish Catholic are there, the South. You know, it's the D's, D's, those, the, the Bears. The they're only in Beverly, my friend. Well, they're all over. Okay. But it was, a, it was a nice area to grow up. Everybody, you know, had a work ethic. Everybody appreciated each other. Everyone knew each other. So we did the show for about five and a half years out, out of a little facility there in Dalton. And then every 4th of July, there was uh, the annual um, Dalton Parade and all the fire engines and oh, the fire yes. trucks. Oh, yeah. and, and I always remember my, my dear friend, Sergeant Ritter from the Riverdale Police Department, would always sneak over on duty. I worked with him, but we would be um, on top of the roof over at the cable facility yep. getting ready to do, do the show. And here, Sergeant Ritter had to be like in his 60s at the time. He always spoke to pipe. And he would climb that. He would climb that ladder. Ha 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 ha! Strauss, <laughs> what are you doing up here, Strauss? And he always snuck over to, yep. to come to that that studio. So we did the show for for a period of years there. Met a lot of different people. And there was this guy, Brian. What was his name? Jorgensen. No, Brian. Brian Smith. Smith. <laughs> Smith is his name. So I was enjoying this this story. He worked for the cable company. Yes. Um, usually a long day, and for some reason had, you know, a little bit his of odor. His pants were always down. He had bagger pants because of his, you know, you're done at the end of the day, your, your pants are hanging. And let me tell you, folks, when we were younger, there wasn't enough gin in that town that we couldn't drink. <laughs> Just kidding. So we would go after Where the Where did show. that come from? I have no Are idea. Are you talking about something? You want no, to talk because about I, remember, I remember Tom Snyder talking about, well, there was a time when, when Mr. So-and-so, his producer, when Mr. So-and-so and I, there wasn't enough gin in town that we couldn't drink. So we would go with Brian, and he always said, let me buy you a round of beer. Let's get some beer <laughs> and a pitch and get up. I got to be home by 7.30. <laughs> so his, his daughter, every week, she had to be like, I don't know. And she would walk in front. We're going to show a clip sometime yes. of her walking in front. Maybe See, put a montage together or something like montage. that. Montage. All right. So what's the deal with the hyp the hypnotist tonight? Bring it on. Yeah. You think what the so? hell? Oop, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm in trouble like with everybody. Yes, and uh, we'll find out. But anyway, uh, thanks for coming. And you drove in today. Yes. That's two weeks in a row. Now, this is the first time that we've been doing back-to-back -back yep. in a while. Mm -hmm. And it has been back-breaking work, let me tell you. 545, I was on the road today. Oh, it's good to see you. Yeah, All right. I'm here. Okay, and when we come back, uh, hypnosis. Hypnotic. Hypnotic fun. Hip hypnotic erotic. All on The Greg Show after this. Thank All you. right.
I'm not happy man. I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday came suddenly. Why she had to go. Oh, I don't know. She wouldn't say. I said something wrong. Now I long for yesterday. <laughs> I can play some. Um, I got this one. It's pretty. It's a pretty hot song. It's a lot of young kids would probably know this one. Well, please do it. All right. Go ahead and do it. Can't touch that. show. Uh, hypnosis is uh, an interesting um, field of study and um, and we always like to do something interesting on this program uh, and we would like to welcome hypnotist Mr. Bob Newhart ladies and gentlemen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please welcome Larry Garrett. I was my, in the, we were in the my green, pleasure to be here. We were in the, the green room earlier, and I said, how are you, How are you, Mr. Newhart? And you looked at me like, oh, okay, look at what I'm getting into We're here. off to a good start. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you've been doing hypnosis for as long as I've been alive. You said it started in 1968. Uh, that's when I first started training. Mm -hmm. Started my practice in 1970. Okay. Mm -hmm. How does one train to be a hypnotist? Well, it's, it's, it's progressed over the years. Right now we have um, people who are trained to be trainers they call them trained to trainers and they uh, spend about 200 hours teaching a person how to do hypnosis what it's about how the subconscious mind works how to communicate to it mm -hmm. so it's kind of extensive training okay now back in the 60s and the early 70s mm -hmm. and the 80s hypnosis you know it was a growing field where people came to you to try to stop smoking. It, it was rough to uh, earn a living doing hypnosis in the 70s. Probably most people thought of hypnosis to quit smoking or lose weight. That was it. But uh, now, of course, we know anything when there's conflict in the mind, where the logical mind and the emotional mind are in conflict, hypnosis is good. So when a person says, I know I'm okay, but I feel like I'm not, then hypnosis is good. A person says, I know I don't need these cigarettes, but I feel like I do. Uh, if a person's sick, you know what happens when we get sick? We freak out. Oh my God, I'm sick. Am I going to die? Uh, you know, Jenny and I were talking earlier. We die, let's go in our sleep, and this way we don't think about it. Otherwise, we freak. Hypnosis relaxes that anxiety. Now, oh, are you able to hypnotize yourself? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I think Greg, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, because it's a when a person hypnotizes you, he or she is just saying, "Follow my instructions." That's all. So pretend like hypnosis is a as a subjective field, like learning how to play a piano. So I'm going to say to you, "Here's how we're going to play this piano," but you have to play the piano. I'm not going to play the piano for you. So all hypnosis becomes self-hypnosis because they say, close your eyes, you close your eyes, relax your feet, relax your feet. So as you follow the instructions, you're hypnotizing yourself. Wow. Yeah. I feel hypnotized right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now, did you feel like a hypnotic thing coming over during the monologue at all, or the conversation that we were oh, having? Oh, I was enjoying. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to applaud with Scott, but I didn't know if it was allowed or not. Appropriate. <laughs> Appropriate, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appropriate, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but uh, I enjoyed it. I sat back there enjoying it. I took a couple of shots of you guys, and I said, oh, my God, these guys are good. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, what's been one of the hardest challenges like, can you tell, talk of a time that, that one of your most, uh, I, I don't know if bizarre would be a bizarre request or, or working on uh, an issue with somebody that just was way out of the norm? Well, you know, I hypnotized Uday Hussein. So that was pretty funny. Hussein from Saddam Hussein's son. 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 Uh -huh. 
So that was pretty far out of the norm. I mean, you don't do that every day, you know. I did. I spent um, about 60 hours with him in 2001. So that was pretty strange. But I've hypnotized uh, pretty some unique people. One thing I think that what happens, uh, Greg, much like I'm sure with yourself with broadcasting after many, many years, is all of a sudden you're willing, willing to take on almost anything. I hypnotized a murderer, I remember, in the 1980s. and A murderer? A murderer who killed somebody. And he didn't remember killing that person. Uh, he had 32 witnesses that saw him kill this person. He shot a person, threw the gun down and ran out, but he drew this blank like an amnesia. So uh, they had taken me over to County House, or County Hospital, listen to me, County Jail, and hypnotized him to remember killing this person. And it wasn't that they, it wasn't that they, that they thought he, maybe he didn't kill. They knew, everybody knew. He didn't know. So that was pretty bizarre. And was that scary for you? Well, you know, it was. That's a great question because I, I, I learned a lesson that day. Even a murderer has a reason for what they do. So it was scary going there. Uh, you know, when the, when they called me up from county jail and they said, you know, would you come in and hypnotize this person? Oh my God, a murderer! My God, he must be ugly. He must be ferocious. He's a killer. Mm -hmm. And he was just a nice, gentle guy who was in the wrong place at the wrong time and pulled the trigger when he shouldn't have. Yeah. And and I find you know what, I made a comment one time where I said uh, to, to a group of people I said you know mm -hmm. murder people who have murdered people mm -hmm. are people too they sure are. and they and you would think things. that uh, you know a heinous act that um, mm -hmm. you know that uh, oh these are just horrible people I have met more people that have been incarcerated and yeah. and you know growing up sure. it, you kind of raise that oh no you don't want to go to jail don't want to do these things. Mm -hmm. And then you meet people, you know, I met people who have been incarcerated, mm -hmm. and they were based on decisions and choices, and, and they're people like you and I. Sure. And you so they scra they people scratch your head, are you nuts? Well, I am, but, uh, but, but people are people, and sometimes people make the wrong mistake. Yeah, what, what, what we said earlier, how... Wrong choice, no, excuse me. Wrong choice, wrong mistake, mistake, wrong mistake. They made the right mistake, the wrong mistake. Right mistake. They, uh, we said earlier how sometimes the mind has this conflict, and... We are sitting here attempting to be very appropriate, you know, why don't we jump up on these chairs and dance or something? Because it wouldn't be appropriate, so we don't do it. So when a, a person kills somebody, when a person robs a bank, they're doing something that their, their, uh, their energies are out of control with. It'd be like if I take this object and I throw it at you, you duck to keep from getting hit or catch it. And if I say, I promise I won't throw it, Greg, but I'm going to pretend in an hour and I swing it, you still duck. Why'd you duck? I told you I won't throw it. But the reactive process is, I'm broke. I need some money. I need some money for drugs. Okay. I need some money for food. So I go into a 7-Eleven and I go to rob the guy and the guy reaches down and I think he's going to reach for a gun or a button or something and I shoot him. Well, in, in my subconscious mind, I shot him so I wouldn't get caught. See, I shouldn't have shot him. But I shot him. So I think the reactive process of the subconscious mind is difficult to control. I think we all have obsessive types of energies. You know, when we're in a traffic jam, we want to run, run, the, run our car into that guy's bumper. You know, but we don't do it. Some people do. That's called road rage. See, so so we do have these energies that we lose control over. All right. When we come back, mm -hmm. we're going to talk. Uh, I want to talk about addiction and hypnosis. Okay. All right, because there's all kinds of addiction and. Okay. Bad fine lines I think between all of it yeah. and uh, we'll be back with more after this all right Uh, Garrett here on The Greg Show. And uh, we were talking before the break, uh, you know, there's so many addictions now. And there's so many different programs to get off of, you know, to, to mm. you know. Yeah. And, and yet a lot of people say there's no cure for addiction. Um, hypnosis has always been kind of controversial in whether or not one can, you know, kick or heal from uh, an addictive state. Mm. Is, have you dealt with any of that in your practice? I have. Other than smoking, I'm yeah, talking right. about like drugs, stuff, alcohol. Drugs, yeah. alcohol, obsessive behaviors. Uh, chaos. Chaos. The, fir the first thought I think of is uh, hypnosis has a phrase that says you can't hypnotize somebody to do something they don't want to do. So 
often if we think about addictions of any kind, there's a, there's a desire to want that addiction. And there's, oh, but it's ruining my life, but there's still a desire to want that addiction. Uh, so then it becomes difficult. And, and you know, whether they're 12 step programs or whether they're in house treatment, uh, unless that patient's motivated, nothing's going to happen. But here's what's exciting about hypnosis. Hypnosis, and I don't like the word cure because it's, it's like we're talking about a disease here that we need to cure, when really maybe we need to teach the subconscious mind not to crave. So I, I pick up the small addiction of smoking just to make a metaphor. But and it's a horrible addiction. It's a horrible addiction. Horrible. But the smoker thinks it's good. Uh, but you know what? More often than not now... Subconsciously. Uh, you think it's okay. They rationally it's saying, I don't want to smoke anymore. These are bad for me. As I throw it in my mouth. Then you watch, we, 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 I know we're speaking about heavier duty addictions, but let's speak for smoking because it's gentle and everybody can observe it like this. The smoker takes a hit on a cigarette and he goes, can't mess with, can't mess with him, can't mess with her. That person's got the world by the tail with that drag and exhale on the cigarette. So now, logically, they say, I got to quit smoking. I got to quit my drugs. I got to quit drinking. But then the subconscious mind is still looking for that one high, that, that one time that was good. Now, here, here, Greg, is a great example of an addiction. When we try to stop something, it gets stronger. If I say to you, don't think of an elephant, all of a sudden your mind's thinking, of, you weren't thinking of an elephant until I told you not to. So as soon as the science says no smoking, I have an urge for a cigarette. So if I say, don't think of an elephant, you think of an elephant. But what if I say to you, it's okay, Greg, if you want to think of elephants, go ahead. It immediately relaxes the addiction. The metaphor being the addiction for drugs. So we constantly beat up people who are addicted. You shouldn't drink. You shouldn't do those drugs. When in reality, all we need to do is get that person to relax the angst, and that's what hypnosis does. Hypnosis neutralizes the angst. And how long does it work? I mean, can, can one session last an entire lifetime, or...? Well, if I teach how to play piano, I teach how to play Mary Had a Little Lamb. How long will that last? I thought you'd say Mary Had a Little Elephant. I don't know. <laughs> how long will that last? So if, I <laughs> if I teach how to play piano, a simple song, how long will that last? A lifetime. Good, good. Right. As, long as, as long as we practice. We might even forget. But look at this one. You hear a song play that was popular when you were 16 years old, and it was significant to you. Boom. All of a sudden, you remember who you are with, what you are wearing, what the weather was like. And that was many years ago right. and you hear it so hypnosis is like a song it creates an anchor that's a memory that f creates a feeling Larry Garrett is a hypnotist and once again the website is GarrettWellnessCenter.com or, or Garrett Hypnosis how's that that's huh? easier GarrettHypnosis.com or Bob Newhart Loves You.com. <laughs> no, I'm kidding thank you <laughs> thank so you, much Greg. for being thank with you. us I'm honored. Scotty Joe Vegas thank you for being with us Greg Struess thanks for watching we'll see you next week good night everybody